everybody. Uh, my name is Aaron. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been uh, a couple years since I've posted any videos, but I um, had a little bit of an injury and uh, had to take a year off riding, but I am back, hopefully to post some more riding videos, but I thought I would start off with a review, a long-term review of my Da Vinci Cobain. This has been a great bike. I bought it in 2022. I saw as of 2024, uh, Pink Bike actually did a review on this and um, I think they nominated it one of the best budget hardtails, um, which I would totally agree with. Um, and so I'll just give you a quick rundown um, what I think of it. It is an aluminum frame. Oh. Mosquitoes are biting out here. So as I've said, I bought this bike in 2022. It is now 2024. I've had it for two years. Two years in, I feel like I have a good enough of a feel of this bike to give it an honest review um, and to tell you if I would buy it again for any of you who are considering it. Um, so let's just jump right into it. It is a aluminum frame, uh, not carbon, aluminum. Um, and the thing I like about this bike uh, is that it is a aluminum frame that is made in Canada, in Quebec. The spec package, this is the slightly higher tier, uh, the SLX package they call it. It has a SLX drivetrain, but it does have a Dayor cassette, which I'm totally okay with. I think the Dayor uh, cassette is the most durable of the whole Shimano lineup because it is fully steel, not aluminum, no aluminum gears. Um, so I have not had any issues with that yet. It has the Marzocchi Z2 Bomber Fork with the rail damper. Um, as far as I know, the rail damper is the exact same as the grip damper. So if you're familiar with that and um, you're okay with it, then uh, this fork is right for you. I personally haven't had any complaints about this fork. It doesn't have a ton of adjustments. It just has a basic compression and rebound but um, that's been plenty enough for me once I got it set up I pretty much forgot about it it's a set and forget type of thing um, haven't felt any need to change it the wheels that comes on are the v2 uh, da vinci wheels I have zero complaints about these wheels um, as far as I know they are da vinci's in-house brand they did a whole video on um, their manufacturing process, including how they assemble and put all the finishing touches on this, these wheels. And uh, yeah, no complaints. They, they're true to this day after a solid year of riding on them. They did come with tubes in them. However, uh, I switched over to tubeless, obviously. Um, I'm running on stands valves with stands tape and stand sealant. The tires that came on this bike are awesome. You have your Maxxis uh, Minion DHF up front and the DHR2 in the rear. The thing that I really love about this bike is that you have 2.6s in the front and 2.6s in the rear, which um, tremendous amount of grip with these tires. They are not the 3C or double down or dual compound. They're just the regular XO tubeless ready. But uh, for trail riding, that's been perfect. Haven't had any issues with that. Um, haven't had any blowouts or nothing. I run about, I was running 25 PSI. The last couple rides I've been running 23. I believe I'm probably even like 22 or 21 today. Comes with a race face bar. You've got uh, two piston Shimano hydraulic brakes. These ones seem to have tons of stopping power. Um, I've never felt the need to upgrade them. And uh, they're paired with 160 rotors stand up for a little bit um, the only thing that I did change about this bike was the stock seat I found that the da Vinci seat was absolutely terrible it really hurt my butt um, but then again everybody is different and saddles are a very subjective thing so I swapped it out with the specialized one um, I find that one works really well for me as well as uh, specialized grips and race face Chester pedals just for a little bit of flair. Um, for anybody who is looking to upgrade from their thousand dollar range hardtail and they're considering something that's about in the two thousand dollar range, I would totally recommend this bike. Um, like I said, I've had no complaints. There's nothing really I've wanted to change. 
The dropper post that comes on it is a 130 mil, I believe, on the X size XL. And it's a trans X dropper. Of all the dropper posts I've ever had, this one is my favorite. It is absolutely snappy. Um, haven't had any issues with it. Haven't had to do any sort of service or nothing. It just works uh, flawlessly. The bike does come with a threaded bottom bracket, which I'm always pleased to see as opposed to press fit. The only other minor complaint that I have about this bike is that there's only a spot for one water bottle cage. There's plenty of room, especially on this XL, to have one on the seat tube. Um, so it would have been nice to have the extra water bottle cage there. I'm not sure if the 2024 model has that. That's something you have to check out for yourself. Um, and then the only other thing actually, second thought, is that you do have these two mounts here for a chain guide, but it would have been super nice if they included the third mounting point so that you can actually have a bash guard. That's the only thing that I've actually wanted to put on this bike that I haven't been able to. Um, at some of the spots I ride, there are some pretty big rock features to uh, go over and it would be nice to have that bash guard there just uh, for peace of mind. Other than that, this is it. So anyway, I'm not going to get too much more into the details. Um, this was meant to just be a little bit of a short review, a little bit of a um, small channel review on the bike. I know, like I said, Pink Bike reviewed it, um, but it's nice to see somebody who's more in like the, the real world. Let me rephrase that. This is just meant to be a confirmation from more of a regular rider um, on whether or not this is a great bike. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I plan to do some more reviews of a few of my other bikes. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. It's a beautiful day out here. The mosquitoes are biting a little bit, but um, I'd still rather be outside than inside. Okay, so we're gonna ride up or walk up this and then ride down it. You know what? Let's take this. A little bit easier of a walk up. Let's loose it. We need a berm right here so you can carry speed without washing out. Okay, so this section here, it's super loose with the gravel. They almost put way too much gravel. So let's see how I do it for traction. Oh, I to feel myself sliding out.